guess before I answer the question, I should explain why I don't know the answer to your question. Um, I was, uh, I've been teaching math for a period over maybe 10 years, mostly high school level, but all different, you know, up through calculus, pre-calculus and everything. Uh, I was called at the last minute to fill in, and so I'm getting my hands wet with what's going on here. Maybe some of you are new and you feel the same way about the school. You know, things are new. I just showed up, you know, uh, found out where the cafeteria is. Um, the reason I'm pausing is I don't know if there's an official syllabus. Um, uh, basically, uh, as, a, as a first uh, estimate of what's going on, uh, everybody should have the book Know this book. Tell me if you don't have the book yet. Okay. Well, this is the book for the course. It's we're starting on chapter eight. If you place into the book into the class without taking the somebody wants to get in over there, I think. No. If you placed into the class over the next few days, it wouldn't hurt for you to page through the first part of the book, familiarize yourself, see if you know the material. If you're, you know, I have a few questions, please bring them to class. It's okay to start, stop me at the beginning and say, you know, hey, how important is this? I don't know this, what can I do about it? Or uh, if you really feel lost going through the first part of the book, then you might want to think maybe this isn't right class for you. That's for you to decide. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, the first chapters, I think, 8, eight 9, and 10. Uh, it's about, we're gonna, I'm going to talk about what in class now, what, what we're going to cover. Um, but, um, lost my um, that kind of half-assed half answer your question for the time being? Okay. It's math, yes. <laughs> Thank you. It's the cover of the book. Well, it's not the, uh, I don't have the cover. I, I kind of, it's a loose leaf, and I just. Yeah. Oh, well, let me, let me give you some resources. Um, is that part uh, three of the sequence course book is what he was asking about? Yeah. Because there's a 48A, 48B, and 48C. That's just the 48C portion of the book. That's correct. It's the same book. If you took one of the 48 classes, you should already have the book. Uh, this is a custom edition, too. It's not the standard from this company. It has a little extra material that we are going to cover. Uh, okay. Um, all right, any other just kind of... Oh, let me, let me talk to you about this. I know I've said too much about it already. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. The size of the class here is fine. I know there's at least one other gentleman who's not going to be here for a couple sessions. Uh, so I think everybody here who's on the wait list, you can be pretty sure you're going to get in. Um, if you come, right? If you don't come to class, we're in a different situation. Um, okay. okay. So I see a hand question. Yes. Will we be needing the textbook during class? No. I mean, if uh, all things are all things I say right now about are subject to change, but I won't like call you on it, you know, and say, why did you bring your textbook? I will tell you if I want to bring your question. I don't think so. I don't think I need it. Um, I'll provide some handouts. You will need the textbook. Uh, you will want to review the material in the chapter. Uh, there will be some problems from the textbook that you need to do. Okay. All right. So, uh, resources. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about resources. Uh, okay. Uh, I always have fun with this in class. My <laughs> name is Mr. Schoenbrunn. Uh, you're just coming in late? Yeah. Uh, are you registered for the class? Yeah. Come on up, put your name here. Now the pen is on. Do you have the pen? Yeah. Stretch your name down. Uh, my name is Mr. Schoenbrunn. You don't have to pronounce it right. You can call me Mitchell if you like. You can call me Mr. Schoenbrunn. You can call me Mr. I don't care. Hey, you works. I'm not picky. Um, 
But you might want to get my name spelled right because if you go to foothill.showandrun.com, you'll see I have a little website I'm starting to build with information for you. The first piece of information is the green sheet. All right? Uh, sitting up there for a minute, I'm going to move it because I'm going to talk a little bit about it. Uh, most of this is going to be pretty correct. Uh, some things may change a little. Number of quizzes, number of, number of tests. Um, and if it changes, it'll probably change within the first two or three weeks and I'll let you know. Uh, all right, let's, let's talk about the green sheet a little. Uh, we've already talked about the textbook, math, Fourier, A, B, and C, pre-calculus, custom edition by Foothill. You can get it, I guess, in the bookstore. Or there may be some other way to order it. This tells you, oh, okay. Uh, there's mention, see, I can't, <laughs> I, you guys are ahead of me. I can't even log on to my own website here right now. Uh, but if you go there, there's information about the web, in here about the web assign uh, access code. Oh, it's, if you want to write this down, it's 4096-5852. There's really nothing on there right now. I guess you can use it as a way of communicating to me. Uh, I don't have my official, I don't have my official email yet. Phone? 4096-5852. Again, if you take down this URL, you'll find your way there. Yes? Uh, just enter it, it says our instructor is Debbie Lee. But sorry, what about if you enter the class key, it says the instructor is Debbie Lee. Are you oh, sure that's, that's the right that's, number? That's an error on my part. Uh, that's just because she gave me something to start with, and apparently I messed up. You looked, you looked on the site already? Yeah. Okay, well, I don't know why I have the wrong one up there, but um, supposedly my email will be shown from Mitchell at foothill.edu. For the next week, let's say, if you need to email me, you can try this. MA shown at eobox.com. Uh, Practical matter after I get this new email, I'll probably just send your email back to you and say, send it to this official site because that's what they want me to do and I want to do the right thing. Okay, uh, apparently you will need a graphing calculator. Now, if anybody here is, don't raise your hand, if anybody here is financially really constrained. I think I have somewhere in my archives a Windows simulator that you could use for free. You wouldn't be able to use it in class. You wouldn't be able to use it on a test. I think I can get loaners for class. If somebody, that's an issue for somebody, maybe just send me an email and let me know and I'll see what I can find out about it. Uh, the calculator needs to be either a TI-83 or an 84. Now, let me correct a little. If you have a bigger number than that, you can use it. You use it for homework, you can use it for class. But if you have a bigger number than that, then your calculator, your TI calculator, may be able to do what we call symbolic manipulation. And you're not allowed to use it on a test. It's just a department rule. So hopefully that's not a big deal. I realize these are like 100 bucks or so. It's nothing. Trivia, we're going to be using them. Has anybody here never used one of these? Okay. Right. Anybody not have one? Okay. All right. Um, anyway. All right. Calculators. Um, <coughs> Debbie has some stuff here. She says student learning outcomes. Successful student will be able to, be able to model real life phenomena using trigonometric functions 
use the model to make predictions, interpret solutions within the context of real life phenomena. Okay, um, I'll just make a kind of philosophical comment here. Um, they are very much focused here on kind of real, real world stuff. So, here we go, real world oscilloscope. Um, I'm going to follow in the footsteps of the department. Uh, this is not the only approach. Uh, when you get to calculus, it's much more uh, algebraic, you know, algebraic problems. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. Um, by the way, um, I, I know that I talk too much. Or are you putting some of you to sleep? I'll try not to do that once we get going. Today's just a funny day. Um, uh, also, at around 7.05, if I haven't noticed, someone should poke me and say, hey, it's time for a break. We get a break this class. In case you don't know, there's a coffee shop around the corner. If you need something, you know, you know, one of you likes me, maybe, you know, I'll give you some money and you'll get me something. I don't know. Close this 7.30, they told me. Uh, they told me 7.30. It's not true. I want to know. Okay. And, you know, get out at 6.55 and run over there. Um, let me talk to you a little bit about the grading policy. As I said, uh, this could change a little bit, the, the numbers. Um, my focus, all right, let me, let me, let's say you're taking a history class and we're learning American history, and let's say you're kind of limping along and you're getting a C and I get your final, you know, just to pass you. Well, your next history class, you're gonna be a little disadvantaged but you're not going to be in the, you know, you're not going to be part of the screw, you know. You can still do history, having not, you know, remembered every date and understood every, everything that happened. It's not true in math. You really have to know the material. You can't skate through it. If you don't know it and you pass, you do yourself a favor by, you know, reviewing it and not going on to do know because you're not going to do very well. Um, I do, I'm, I'm, I'm very good at this. I've been doing this in high school for a long time. And uh, I don't give exams that are gotcha exams. Anybody ever take a math gotcha exam? You know, you do all the material and you get like half of it wrong because, you know, the problems were really hard and the numbers were hard to deal with. And, yeah. right? Anybody ever do that? Yeah, you know it does. I really try hard not to do gotcha exams. The exams will be on the material, you know, it'll be like the, the problems we do. The final will have problems like you saw in the exam, which will be like you know, the quizzes. Um, the numbers, we're going to talk about, I'm going to talk a little bit about numbers. Yeah, I talk too much. But uh, I really, I want you to know the material, but I don't want you to feel like if you weren't the whiz kid in math in high school, you have no chance here. You have, you know, you do have to work, you have to do your part, you have to learn, but uh, uh, I do, as a consequence, I tend to emphasize the finals. Um, if somebody like, you know, if they failed every quiz and every exam and they aced the final, I would make, I would make sure they would pass. Because as I say, I'm interested in you learning the material so when you go on, maybe some of you will go to calculus, hopefully. Uh, fascinating subject, I, I like to teach. Uh, you'll be prepared for it. Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to give you credit for doing homework because I know if I don't, some of you won't do it and you're better off doing it. I'm not going to give you a lot, but you should do your homework. It's there to get you to that place. Yes? Is homework online? Or? Oh, yeah, <laughs> details, details. Uh, they presented me with a whole bunch of online homework. Um, uh, it's quite honestly, it's, you know, you get overwhelmed. 
I'm probably going to be overwhelmed. I'm probably going to be like boots on the ground here. I'm going to give you stuff. Here, no problems. If 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 I really get my act together, there'll be some online stuff. Uh, there are online problems. You can go work on them, and I encourage if you feel like that's helpful to do it. Um, so I'm, you're not sign I'm not saying I'm not going to. As of right now, I it's kind of way too so far the off. First week, you're not going to sign. The first uh, certainly the first week. Uh, I, there is an assignment that you're going to get, which you can find at foothill.com, and I would, maybe someone here who has access will trace me with that. I think I named how to read that. Okay, let's not worry about that. Uh, I hope I don't really have to say much about honesty. Uh, you should be honest with yourself. If you had the opportunity to look at someone else's exam and get a whole bunch of answers right and pass through without knowing the material, you're really hurting yourself. Uh, but um, I'm, I'm going to try and prevent that. And if I observe it, I'm duty bound to record it. Uh, apparently, the, well, you know, the school system here doesn't like when people cheat. What a surprise. Um, don't do it. <laughs> you know, it just doesn't, it's not worth it. It doesn't, you know, help you in the next class. You know, um, okay, enough said. Uh, at the bottom of the green sheet, there's mostly stuff from uh, Debbie. How to succeed in class, it takes time. Yeah, okay, we're, we're adults here. I hope we're adults. You know, you're gonna have to do work, you're gonna have to, allocate a sufficient amount of time. Um, I, you know, I also want to say, I understand that <coughs> math is one of those subjects that, you know, it's really annoying. There's always these guys in class who love it and they like eat it up and you're sitting there and like, it gives me a headache just to look at, you know, my homework, right? Um, you know, I went back to grad school when I was 45. If you think learning math when you're in your 20s is hard, you just you know put that in your list of to bucket list things to do. You really need to develop discipline, self-control. You know you have to say you know I really I want to go out and party with you tonight, but I have this homework. You really have to you have to learn to do that. It's it's this is a skill that's important not just for math, it's for life. You know some things important in life are really hard. You really, you know, you don't want to do it. You gotta sit down and do it. Okay. You know, again, I know you guys are adults. I don't want to dwell on this. Um, you know, I could I could talk about this for an hour or two like my eighth graders and ninth graders and they wouldn't listen at all. So you guys who you knows. All right, let's uh, let's let's start off with anybody wondering what that thing is over there? Okay, it's, it's, it's kind of a graph, but, but actually there's a box here. Does everybody see the box? An electronic piece of equipment. Anybody know what this is? Anyone seen anything like this? Someone said oscilloscope. Yeah, it's an oscilloscope. And it's not just an oscilloscope. It has a uh, built-in, it's kind of cool, it has a built-in uh, signal generator. Uh, that's the signal we're looking at. Does anybody recognize that signal? It's a sine wave, that's right. Um, or, or maybe it's a cosine wave. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Kind of depends where it starts, right? Uh, what it is today is it's a periodic wave, and we're going to talk about periodic. That's today's class is going to be mostly about periodic waves. Uh, I want to give you just a quick. Quick idea of the next the next few days. Uh, they were going to do periodic functions, of which really the most important ones are going to be the trig trig functions. Uh, but uh, periodic functions come up in all sorts of real world situations, so we're going to talk about those today. Uh, anybody like? 
if I get sloppy and you can't read my handwriting, call me on it, please. Right? Because I, I will get sloppy if you don't. Uh, uh, Thursday, we're going to look at angle measurements. Maybe we can look at it a little today. I'm not sure. Angle measurements. Uh, how many degrees in a circle? Yeah. Does anybody here, just kind of let me know, has anyone run into radians before? Okay, you, uh, maybe some of you are shy. It's okay. uh, we're going to do graphing, graphing of, of uh, tree functions. And and that's I don't really I haven't planned much beyond that. Okay. So uh, we've got a signal here. It's uh, sine sine wave. Um, periodic wave. Like do we know what a periodic wave is? It repeats. It repeats after a certain. Yeah, yeah, it repeats. It's not, not very tricky. We have a really formal way of saying this in mathematics. We would say that f of x plus p equals f of x. f is some function, and that p is a constant here, right? You don't have to that we call the period. So if I'm to look at this graph here, maybe I can do something. Where do I see this? I can put up another one here. Would that be good? I don't know if it's going to work, but I'll try. Okay, so it'll take a minute to get going. Um, if I take some place on the graph, like here's a peak, and I move along it in one direction or another, a certain distance, p, I'm at the same peak again, right? That's true for the peak. Here's kind of the center line, right? Same thing with the trough. And this distance is a constant. That's this p, the period. Now, uh, this is kind of the most basic periodic wave you're going to run into. Uh, there are other periodic waves. Uh, this is supposed to be a square wave. You can't see the trace because it kind of moves up and down so quickly, but uh, a square wave kind of looks like this. Have any idea what like a square wave? I mean, what that would model? Would that model something? It's not a function. Hmm? It's not a function. You don't think so? Okay. Why isn't it a function? No, 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 no. Why is it a function? Ah. Well. Okay. Now let's make a distinction here. This oscilloscope is a real-world thing, right? So it doesn't, it's not a real square wave in the sense it doesn't go straight up. It takes a little bit of time. So it actually is a function. But um, if you're new, and do we have any more chairs? We have it here. Yeah. Um, and if you're if you're in this class, if you're registered, are you registered for this class? Hmm? Okay, if you're registered, put your name over here. If you're not registered, the gathered or the wait list, put your name over here. Um, how would we do this? This is good. Because I want to talk a little, I want to make sure you guys have a little feel for functions. Right? So how would I make a square wave a function, right? Because 
if there really were kind of a bunch of points like that, as Yudi says, this is not a function because it, it fails the what test? Vertical line test, right? But you can kind of have a square function if you do this. All right? We say here we have a point. Here we don't have a point. Here we have a point. Right. So this is kind of an idealized square wave. Doesn't look so good. Here we have kind of a real, real world example where it is, you know, it's actually to move up kind of takes a little bit of time. Um, there's a circuit in here doing this, so it's not instant, it can't be instantaneous. All right. uh, another, I'm, I'm almost at the limit of the, the variety here. Anyone ever see one of these? Sawtooth function? It's a little easier for the scope to do this, as you can see. Up, down, up, and down. Uh, okay. Uh, these, are, these are kind of abstract, although it's still an oscilloscope. Uh, anybody, anybody think of like in the real world? Oh, actually, I'll come back to this question. Can anybody think of an example of a real world square wave function? Use your imagination. Have ever been to the opera? Play and you know you see the see the play and when you go out for your break, right? You get your wine or your coffee. And what do they do when they want you to come back? Mm -hmm. Right? It's kind of like a square wave, right? On, off, on, off. okay. Or, or maybe when when Dr. Demar is monitoring your heart rate, that's also another. It's not a square wave. It's a periodic, periodic function. Uh, what do they call that? EKG. Uh, yeah, electrocardiogram. Right. No. Uh, or probably. Look, 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 look. Right, your heart's going. Actually, it, it's nothing. <laughs> hard way I think hard. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you know, um, I, I actually, uh, in my other life, I work on computer stuff, and uh, I work with these guys who built this little box for nurses who, this is creepy, you know, anyone know what a catheter is? Yep. <laughs> okay. So sometimes you have to take a catheter Put it up somebody's vein. Actually, I think you do it with the right arm, and you get that catheter up there into their heart. So, like, uh, um, you notice I wasn't an art major. <laughs> There's my arm. There's the heart. And thread this thing up into the uh, artery. So, uh, I worked on a device, a little box, a little kind of oscilloscope thing, and. It's to help them guide, at the very tip of this, they have a little sensor. And so what you get is you kind of get uh, a wave, and then there's kind of the heart, you know, that's kind of something like this, where there's kind of a, a bump. And apparently, like, as you get close to the heart, one of the bumps gets bigger, and you kind of kind of get just just into the uh, the chamber and you put some some medicine in there, right? Like where you want it. That's a periodic wave. Although it you know it looks different as they insert it because it's getting closer and closer. So we'll talk about amplitude in a minute. Okay, any other any other real world waves, periodic waves? Come on, we're not that far from the Pacific. Nitrates, radio waves, nitrates. I'm, I'm speaking loud. Tide. Tides. Tides. Oh. Yeah. OK. 
Okay, tides go up and down, up and down, up and down, right? Over what, what period of time? Uh, each moon cycle. Okay, now, the moon cycle, the moon's going around, right? That affects the tides. But there's also a daily cycle, right? Because the Earth is spinning, right? Oh, so, so when we're talking about something mathematically here, right? We're talking about something very precise. We're talking about the real world. We're modeling something that's not quite that precise. Every day, you know, the uh, tides are a little different, right? Depending on the time. Well, sure. How about how much light there is every day? It's kind of periodic, right? Every day is light, it's dark, it's light, it's dark, but then there's this other period, right? It takes a whole year to go from really dark in December, really light in June, and back again. Okay. Hmm? Yes, that's right, that's right. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, who here is like kind of uh, needs a break for a few minutes? Okay. Um, oh, there's one other thing. I, this is just because it's fun. Uh, this is an electronic wave, right? But what if I plug it into a speaker that I have conveniently located here? <laughs> Does anyone know what you get? <coughs> Noise, right? Let's see. I don't know. I mean, maybe. Okay, so for those of you not familiar, this is kind of a pure sounding tone. This is this is what a sine wave turned into air waves sounds like. It's very pure. Anybody here play a musical instrument? Okay, so you know about every instrument sounds different, even though when they're playing the same thing, because why? They don't sound like this, do they? Like, let's say this is a kiss. That's because they don't just have a pure sound, they have multiple tones overlapping. Yeah, they have, they're more complex forms than this, right? Uh, all right, let's do the experiment here. Let's see how young everybody is. So, uh, raise your hand if you can hear this, all right? We're gonna, okay, yeah. I'll tell you when I, can, when I stop hearing it. Still hear it. and hear those great violin overtones while you're young and you can appreciate it. Okay, I don't know. This is around, uh, I don't know. I shouldn't decibel. Yeah. No, des, okay. Decibels is volume, is am amplitude. So this is measure. Okay, you notice here we've got two things going on. We've got a period. Wait, right? so on. Hmm? Is it so on? Yes. Um, just because um, I heard about noise pollution and all that, so I don't think it's good to leave it on even if you can't hear it. I 
respect your your trust. Okay. So again, we've got two things here. We've got the period, which is the distance here. But then the, the distance between here and here, that's something we call amplitude. Actually, I'm going to give you a slightly different definition, but really the same. And when we're talking about sound waves, the amplitude is how loud something is, right? Frequency is the pitch, right? Which I can no longer hear very well. I'm sorry? I didn't hear the, that word peak or drop. Peak or drop. So peak or, oh no, okay. All right, well let's, let's, all right, let's do the formal stuff, the boring stuff. Right. If you have some kind of periodic wave, I'm just going to draw a sine wave. Perfect sine wave, right? Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to draw an axis here. I uh, find it is a sine wave starting at zero. So uh, there is a distance between the peak and the trough, which could look different, right? Uh, oh, let's a different color, right? I could have some other weird kind of graph here. It kind of look like this. This make believe it's perfectly periodic. Right? But then it's kind of the top and the bottom. And you take the difference, let's call them, uh, well, let's do mathematically. Let's call it like F max, maximum value, and uh, under production, the minimum value. You find the difference. That's like how far apart they are. And you divide it by two. And that's our amplitude. That's just kind of a formal definition. Um, where are you, papers? This has to happen once the first class because, you know, I lose my notes. So I guess I have to. Uh, uh, this has to play it right here. Okay. Um, there's another there's another item here. Um, well, let me just show you something on the scope for a second. Guy up and down, right? Uh, if you're doing electronics, like uh, there's an AC part of the voltage we're measuring, and there's a DC part. DC could be like uh, could be a straight line, right? You know, it could be like up at 10 volts here and zero and minus 10. Right? And then there's the AC part, which is the part going up and down. So somewhere in here, um, I'm going to go back to my sine wave, my nice symmetric sine wave. You know, let's say this is let's say this is an axis here. This is zero zero. And I could have a sine wave here, but 
through the center of it, I have what we call the center line. And I'll just use C for that here. That's very similar. That's F max plus F min over 2. In other words, it's the average of what's up here and what's up here. And it, it's nice to know that because, uh, well, if you're dealing with an AC, an AC plus DC signal, if you move this axis to the center line, then you've just got the AC component, periodic part. I'm sorry. Which part is F max and F min? This, this is this is F max, the maximum value of the function, and this is F min. Okay. Now you could have some crazy wave that you know could go like this. It could go. You know, and the center line is kind of over here. And, okay. All right, so, all right, we've got that. Um, what's this distance again here? What do we call that? That's the period. Uh, well, in this equation here, f of x plus b equals f of x b is the period. Now, let's think for a second. What are the dimensions of P? Hmm. What do you mean by dimensions of P? Okay. So see, when I say dimensions of something, so if I say the dimensions of this room, the room is so many feet by so many feet. So many feet. Yeah. So it's feet cubed. Right? They say the dimensions of the velocity of your car. What are the dimensions of the velocity of your car? It's how fast you could go. But I'm asking a kind of a physics question. The dimensions. Distance over time, right? Miles per hour, feet per second, right? So when I say dimensions, you know, you may be, you may be, I may be confusing you because you're too smart. Because I didn't really tell you what, what are the dimensions of the x-axis here? It's just a function that doesn't really have dimensions unless we kind of give it some. Like, what are, what are the dimensions here? The x axis. Yeah, I'll, I'll actually make it make it simpler. Uh, okay. Do you know what the dimensions? Does that help? What's happening here? It's not just a, a, a drawing, a graph. It's kind of, there's a little trace moving along. What are we measuring? This is not math, by the way. This is physics, right? So don't be panicked, right? This is time, right? Well, that's, that's just because, uh, you know, on your TV screen, well, no, that is, I'm sorry, I'm ancient. Remember when TV screens weren't LCD screens and you had a thing running across? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, that's a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, it's a trace. And the trace kind of lights up the screen for a short time. Now, if it keeps going by fast enough, it'll look solid. Now it looks a little more solid. Now it looks, looks like a solid line. But actually, well, you can you can see it kind of way Yeah, it's pulsing. So this this dimension here is time. The dimension of p period is whatever the x-axis is, right? 
So let's just let's just let this say it's length, right? Period has dimensions of it could be time, but you know, let's say it has you know only length. No, actually, we're going to do p time. You know why? Because all our app, almost all our applications are time. So it could be. What are some examples of time dimensions? No, no, that's velocity. Seconds. Seconds. Any guys? Any other time? Hours. Years. Millennium. Right. All right. So that's period. Typically, is an amount of time. Now, there's another common variable we use, which is called frequency, which is defined as one over the period. Got to be careful. Maybe I'm going to use a big F, not a curly F, because that could really confuse you. Frequency. So what are the dimensions of frequency? Speak up. How often it happens? And within a certain period of time, how many times it repeats itself? Okay. Right. So the, the term we usually use is cycles, which is kind of dimensionless, cycles per time. Cycle being what? You know, typically, you know, the first, you know, periods per time, right? Or did I say that wrong? I think I said that wrong. So in this case, the cycle is how many times the device goes by. Yeah. It's going by a lot more times than you can see typically on the scope. All right, so now we have some basic definitions. We've got amplitude, there's amplitude, amplitude, we've got the center line, we've got the maximum of the function, minimum, we've got period, and we've got frequency. Right. That's today's lesson. We're going to talk more about it, but that's, if you understand that, you're, you're great today. It'll get more complicated. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, we'll do a little more. Um, okay. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm gonna tell you. I'm not big on movies. I don't like class and you know like that movie uh, Bad Teacher. That. No, 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 that's a show. No, it's a movie. Yeah, that's a movie. Yeah, bad teacher. I, I don't show movies very much. But I have a little movie. And I'm only going to show you a few minutes of it. Um, which is, I'm only going to show you a few, a few little minutes of it. Okay. Now I'm going to see horrible boxes. See what? Horrible, horrible boxes. No, no, I haven't. I, uh... Okay, let's see if I can get this to look right. Oh, but, okay, but you so, should so at least check out the interview. Okay. North Korea hates it. I've had terrible bosses, so I, maybe I don't need to see it. No, it's the interview is different. Anybody here think of going into education? Nope. Okay. <laughs> it's weird. Teacher, you have a guy called the principal. He's kind of a horrible boss. No. Okay. Um, not, not the right place. Um, I'm only going to show you like less than five minutes, maybe ten minutes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Permitted. 
after the Depression. 1923, after the Depression. He spends a lot of time. He's been overseas for a while. After the Depression. Depression was over like World War II. Why the Depression? The sine curve is periodic because it consists of a basic shape repeated indefinitely. Here are some other examples of periodic waves. A square wave. A sawtooth wave. That's all I'm showing you that part. You don't want to get confused here over here. I got a little more here. So are all waves meant to be continuous so they have endpoints in between and if you want a math degree I can tell. Are all are all what? Are all waves meant to be continuous from like Start point to end point, or do they have points in between where they stop? Because when you're drawing the graph, oh. you know what you take as. Okay, good, 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 good question, but it, again, it's a good, really good mathematical question. So, someone here, remind me what the domain of a function is. All points of x and all The x values we want to give it, right? Okay? So, uh, this is going to come up again. Yeah. Um, what if I had a function like this? Right? So it's zero here. So what I'm doing here is this is a discrete function. Anyone heard that term before, a discrete function? Okay. Uh, basically, continuous function, well, you can like draw with a line, right? Function. Discrete function, it's you know, x and y, but your x, your independent variable, is only for certain values. It could be Integers could be twos, fours, whatever. It's a discrete function. So the answer to your question is no, it doesn't have to be straight line. This is a periodic function because for any x on here, right, I can say is f of x plus p equal to f of x? Well, sure. If I pick this number here, and I just have to go over this period. Does that help? That answer? Okay. Anybody like feel uncomfortable because they didn't understand that quest question or the answer? It's not, you know, it's going to come up in uh, a problem we're going to work on in, in a minute. So, all right. Um, uh, just 
one little more piece of this I want to show you. Um, oh, no. Uh, this is just going to talk a little bit about the relationship between circular motion and sine waves. And again, just, just a couple minutes. And then we're going to take a break. By the way, the guy who's speaking, Tom Apostle, great mathematician. The history of human progress centers around the wheel. Why can we sleep the world from man's back? Even better than the beast of earth. The wheel brings water to crops, turns wheat into flour, converts nature's energy into electricity, and transports people and goods to the ends of the earth. Before we get to this, uh, uh, I I can provide some office hours for people, but I want to know what would work for people. Office hours might be just being here and coming and talking to me, like before class or after class. I assume like before class is worse because. Who, who, who I can't get here an hour before class because they. So um, it's okay if you don't have an opinion on it right now. You can like let me know, and I can be flexible about this. But um, I'm thinking what I should do is always be here half an hour early, and then if people want half an hour late, if anybody has questions or problems or issues, homework, math. Okay. 
Every seventh or eleventh wave, or some number, is bigger. That really depends on the seventh. I'm just telling you what he told me. Okay. He was a researcher, and he said nobody knows why. Think, think about like when those guys go out to that Mavericks, right? Not every wave is the same size, right? But the big one that comes every once in a while is periodic. It's like some every so many waves, approximately. All this is approximate. But you know, if you go out and you measure it, um, this thing here has to clearly, uh, you know, he's kind of measuring some average here, right? So over time, you have the wave up and down and up and down, but later in the day, high tide, up and down, up and down here, and then low tide down here. <coughs> he's not showing you the little variations, he's showing you the big variations. You are allowed to talk. And, and I don't want 
this to sound, you know, fascistic, but when you're done, I do want your name on the top and we will hand something out. You know, in general, with homework, it's okay to work with people, but you do need to understand it and write, you know, your own stuff. Could you zoom in on it? It's hard to see from back here. Now, just looking at that graph, how do you know that that's periodic? I mean, you can talk to me about it. Okay, well, you're going to write down an answer. Yes? Could you zoom in? I can't. See it from here. I can't read it at least. Uh, and the problem is it's too small, is yep. that it? I can zoom in a little, but then. Well, we can just ask you to scroll down later. That's too far in, but. Okay, how about that? Is that better? Did you do it? 
So if you put some effort in and you wrote something and you didn't blow it off, you get, you know, or you say, full credit, right? Could you show us number four? Yeah. Okay. Is everybody okay if I trace them out of it? I could, but then you won't be able to see it back I'll move it back and forth and see the last. We're going to make it through this, folks. Yeah, so it's not I think three, four, five, and six, you can write down the words period, frequency, amplitude, and range. Right? Yeah. We could write uh, those down. So three, four, <coughs> five, six. These are all what? These are his areas. Frequency. Amplitude. Sorry? Yeah, I may not answer it. Or I may give you a, you know. Oh, I erase that good stuff, did I? I'll put it back here. So the amplitude is equal to the frequency max. Minus the frequency min. Oh, the period. What's the period? The max versus the space and the frequency max. Different. It's the space. Well, here's here's kind of the definition of the periodic function. So the period key. You want to find the number where the function is the same but off. X is off by P. Okay, so that sounds really awful when I say it that way. Yeah. So, so if I had a sine wave, I could take any two, two, any two places. I can take the peaks and measure the difference between the peaks. Or I could measure the difference between the troughs. So if it's truly a pure periodic function, it doesn't matter where you measure it. Right? Like let's say right here the function is 3.21. And here it's 3.21. Well, and that's the period. That's P. That's P. Now the nice thing about this example here is there are units. So if I say what period is, you can tell me what the units are, right? And then if I ask what the frequency is, you can tell me when you give me the number, you can say what the units are. Yes? Are you supposed to see the graph? Yes, I'm sorry. I know this is very awkward. I apologize profusely for my... That was three, four, five, and six. Let's see, what's seven? What is the midline? Oh, okay. Period, frequency, amplitude, range, midline.
you want us to give us yeah. uh, give the extra they want and give two of the extra play up the students? Like I mean they're close enough, but then I mean they're not gonna find them in. Or you want us to look at I'm zoning in on your quest, which your question is really about, which is what you're saying is you are a precise person, you're a mathematician, and you're looking at this and you're going, it's a little bit, it's a very, very old dude. Okay, good, 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 you're doing that. Now, when we get to really algebraic, Periodic, yeah, sines and cosines, you're going to be right there where you need. <laughs> but for now, you loosen up a little, the scientist, plus or minus, there's a little error. I'm just trying to give it a rough idea. And I'm not going to go, oh, you're off point three. <laughs> All right, so yeah. <laughs> right, we got teachers like that. Yeah, he's, he put the decimal place a little low. We'll go over this. We'll go over this. Think about it. We'll go over it. Okay. In a few minutes. Okay. Who here has not gotten to question seven? Uh, I have okay. two questions, Simon. Who here has gotten to question seven? I'm at question seven, I just haven't seen it. The people who haven't gotten to question seven, have you gotten to question five? Point negative two to nine. All right. I think we're close enough. I think we're close enough. Anybody, anybody here feel like they need Absolutely. One or two more minutes all the to do is for discussing this. Processes? The same one that we can use. Or we can talk about that every day. Okay. Yeah. 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 I can show up and sleep through the first play. <laughs> Are you asking if I have to look at the graph? We're going to get to that. We'll get to that. Okay, all right, everybody. Don't panic. Don't panic. If you haven't finished it all, you can kind of follow. It's okay to, you know. Let's uh, let's let's uh, right now, right now. This is an exercise in learning. It's not an exercise in testing <coughs> or confrontation. Okay, we get a, we get a graph here. It kind of flows up and down. And, oh, there's a little bump and then it comes down. And, a little bump. Uh, let's relax for a minute. Let's put the math aside for a second. Does anyone know what, what really causes tides? The moon. Gravity is. Yes. Who's gravity? Is that it? The, the moon's gravity? Yep. Ah. There's another gravitational body in the tide. The sun? It's a little one. When? Called the sun. Yep. Gravity is the sun. There is a certain amount of wind too. That's true. But I, I don't, I'm not an oceanographer, so I can't help you with that. See this little bump here? Right? It's periodic, right? Well, and that's going to change. There's some relationship between the Earth, the Moon, and the Sun. And there's this, there's the Sun's influence there. Otherwise, it would just be a nice sine wave, right? Okay, it's, is it a function of time? Is tide a function of time? Oh, wow. That's one of those questions that's so simple that it's hard. 
some, some of them want to put their, stick their neck out and, and not only answer it, but tell me how you know that it's a function of time. Yes. Okay, there's a the neck. All right, go ahead. Why is it a function of time? The by or the height of the time changes over time. Yeah, it's just that simple. Yeah. It's scary simple, isn't it? I mean, we've got a graph that shows time and the height and it changes. So it's, it's a function of time. Is it periodic in nature? Yeah, of course. Why else would we have, have you guys work on this for 15 minutes? But, but how do we know it's periodic? Somebody raise their hand who wants to say something loud. Say, it repeats itself after 12 hours. Repeats itself after 12 hours, which is its period. Yeah. Yeah. Is it 24? 12 a.m. 12 a.m. 24. 24 hours. How many hours are on this graph? 48. You win. It's 48. See, just look carefully. 12 a.m. to 12 p.m., that's 12. 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. All right, let's do this terrible. So you start at 12 a.m., and we're at 12 p.m., that's 12, 24, 36. This is 48 hours. So between these low tides, I guess it's 24 hours. 24 hour period. Question? Uh, well, would the period actually be 24 hours though? Because where the first function actually meets up with the second occurrence of it is at a slightly different time, namely where it is 8.80. Okay, so, I mean, I, valid question, but let's be clear. Are you like taking this position, you're like looking at the graph real carefully? No, You're saying just, it's not precisely periodic? Well, just the number. Um, it appears to be somewhat periodic with the difference based on the numbers there. Yeah, but I mean, it's... It, okay, so this is, again, this is an example where modeling a periodic function. You've got to be a little careful. You're, you're right to note the discrepancy and... Uh, if you were an oceanographer, you want an explanation for all of that. You want to know about the sun, the moon, the wind, right? We're just kind of in touchy-feely math class here with trying to apply. So we're, you're answering, there's nothing wrong with your question. Valid, being precise. And you guys, you know, the more precise you want to be in a math class, the better off you are. So I don't want to discourage you. In this case, there, we're just treating this a little sim more simply than that. Okay. That's it. So I want to, you know, encourage you to keep doing that. But right now, I don't have a, you know, if I was an oceanographer, I could say the precise function is this, and within X amount, it's periodic. But you know, mm -hmm. I'm not an oceanographer. It is, this is a problem to say. So. Okay. So we know it's periodic in nature because it repeats every 24 hours of period. <coughs> okay. Oh, uh-oh, I answered three. Does everybody get three what the period is now? 24 hours. What is the frequency of the tide function? One twenty-fourths. What was that? Cycles. So if the period is 24 hours, and the cycle is 1 over 24, 1, 1 24 cycles per hour. Does that sound right? Think that through in your head. If, if, if it repeats every 24 hours, in one hour it's repeated 1 24 of the cycle. Think that through in your head. Make sure that makes sense to you. I mean, it's like 
if it takes me five hours to drive from here to LA, right? How far have I gone in one hour? One fifth. Right? Yeah. Don't I mean this this you need to know both of these cycles, you know, uh, frequency and period. I guess I should call this <laughs> big F after function frequency. We use those in problems, right? Um, and you might get a question where it's real easy to find the period, and I ask you for the frequency, and you just, what's, what's that big, big vocabulary, the math vocabulary word? Reciprocal. Reciprocal, thank you. Good vocabulary. Okay, uh, who carefully measured the amplitude of the five function? Do we, do we know what the, what the y-axis is? Okay. Does it actually go down minus 4? Yeah, it, it, that's good enough. I don't want to um, Anybody, just, just as a guess. Any, yes, yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 Does it vary? Like, is the difference between the highs and the difference between the lows? The, the highs are both 8.8. .8. The lows are negative 2.4 and negative 2.9 on day one and day two, respectively. So it's varying a little, right? But again, we're not oceanographers. Yes. Um, I got the average of about 5.725. I like you, I like that word. Could you say that word real loud? Average. The word before that. About. Thank you. Yeah. Right. We're, this is we're it's mom about that. good. Precise mathematical term. Right? I was I was. Now, the graph doesn't seem to say, does anyone want to guess? I mean, I think there are two smart answers here. And they're different. <laughs> what? No, we're talking about the, the units, good question, units of the y-axis, right? The amplitude. Units, units. No, that's the, the value of the what's the what, what units is it? I know I you know I I, I know this question out of context a little nervous. It's a simple kind of thing. So I'll 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 give you a simpler question. Do you think it's in feet or meters? Units. Feet or meters. See, now actually, you could say either, and I say you're, you're smarter than me. Ah. Mm. It looks like feet to me as far as the amount, but on the other hand, what do scientists usually measure things in? Yeah. It's not a question on here, and it would be a guess, but I think it's an excellent question. You will make a good scientist. And you'll make a better scientist if you know your math very well. Okay. And you can make a good math. Okay. What is the range? Now, we didn't talk about range yet. Anyone remember we talked about domain? All the y outputs. Okay. So that's actually a better answer in a math class. This is a math class. Right. Um, if, if we, you know, sometimes it's con people get confused because math means something very precise by a certain word, and it kind of works in the real world, but it doesn't always. Like my favorite one is or. See when mathematicians and some computer scientists use the word or, they mean something different than people mean. Like, uh, you said, uh, this is kind of a logic thing, I'm wasting your time, I guess. Uh, 
said, uh, go to the store and get me bread or milk, right? And he came back with bread and milk. Would that be okay? No. Formal logic just it's no, it's one or the Formal logic, no. Right. No, formal logic, it is right. I'm sorry. You say A or B. If A is true and B is true, is the statement true? Mm, yeah. yeah. But in language, we usually mean by or what we call in math exclusive or. Right? Get me bread or. Right? So, okay. So I bring that up because range in this case, I think someone said it's all the values, which like in a discrete case might be like five and three feet and minus two feet. But I think they really mean what's the you know interval, the range. In other words, I see here we're up around 8.8. .8. That's at one end. Negative 2.9. It looks to me more like negative 2 and, and 8. I mean, and well, I'm, I'm reading the numbers off the, the table. So, um, uh, the, the, the point being, it is a math class, so you can answer it kind of in a math, you know, way and say the range is all those numbers, or you can think of it like an oceanographer and between 2.9 or whatever it was, 2.4, I think, and 8.8. All right, so that's the range. Where, what height could the water be at? Uh, anybody calculate the midline? Is that the same? Oh, you know what? See, now you've caught me. I'm bad. The correct vocabulary word is midline. I said center line. Yeah. Um, the reason I, I, I messed that up is, quite honestly, until I read your book and came up with midline, I'd never seen anybody cared about it. It's not a mathematicians don't like, go for it that often. Okay. Um, we're going to do just about the same problem, except it's not the same problem. I think it's kind of the same questions, but instead of a graph, we have a table. This is, instead of a continuous function, this is now a discrete function. Not only do we not know the values between 1 and 0, there are not. This is, this is called, a, this is a, I mean, typically in a scientific experiment, you take readings every so often, right? Every half second or second. It's not really continuous. You could interpolate if you wanted, but. So here we have a discrete function. So again, take a few minutes. Um, I'll move the, can you see this in the back? Okay. Um, question one would be a little more fun here. So I can ask you when we're done. What's a function? Oh, draw a line. This is section 8.1. That was, I guess, section 8.0 was the last one. Is that right? No, I was section 8.12. Just draw a line. Do the function have to be continuous? I'm smart. I'll figure it out. I'm not sure we're restricting the domain to all whole numbers. Yeah. So. Yeah. While you're doing that, I'm going to write the homework assignment on the board. Which you can find at foothill.shawnbrown.com if you don't want to write it down.
typically I'm going to assign homework Tuesday and Thursday, but none of it will be due until the following Tuesday. You'll always have at least a weekend. Yes? Do functions have to be continuous by definition? No. Okay. Good question. Excellent. In mathematics, absolutely not. Yes? Is there a question about Yes. I'm going to put it up there. Wait, so on the room. What is the midline of the function? That's number seven. Okay, I didn't drill the weekend. I'm done with your class. Yeah, it's really uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's easy to do all this stuff. Okay. So the four. It seems like they kind of got them last year. Maybe the section of these come out of the first time teaching, and so I think they're just kind of smooth fading in the material. Yeah. Being like, oh, it's it's good. Good. By the way, if you're finding this. <laughs> Don't raise your hand. Just smile. You find this pretty. This is pretty easy math, right? It's a little loose. That's true. That's that's because the math department here likes modeling, right? But you know, if you're like kind of a pure math guy and this is driving you crazy, don't worry. And it'll be okay. It really will. If, if, if you over like. Mathetize these things. I won't mark you off for saying that's not a funk, that's not periodic, it's off. Is that supposed to be the okay, function? Now we're going to use M for midline. F max plus F and over. That's the formula for it, but it's kind of a line if you drew it through the periodic function, it'd be right in the middle. Everybody knows WebAssign? If you don't know WebAssign, good. Go to Foothill. Everybody got this? Showandbread.com. Go to the website. There's an entry that says WebAssign. You'll get their document telling you how to sign on. Uh, there's not much information there yet, but you do want to. That's actually one of the ways I'm going to know who's interested in today's class. So please do that. Yes. Did you want to find this class or this week? Or Thursday? Next Tuesday. So in a week? You have a week, yes. Hmm? I'm not saying you always have a week. I'm saying for this one you have a week. For this you have a week, what I'm saying is I'll almost always expect the homework on Tuesday, so you'll have the whole weekend. Like, I'm like you, you know? Tuesday, then you got Wednesday, that's one day. Maybe you've got something else to do that day. Okay, Thursday, you got the whole weekend. 
Monday. Yes. So since it is varied from one math class to the next, will our homework primarily be handled as reading the questions in the book and then turning them in on paper, or will they be handled through web assign? Okay. You clarified the question. At this point, I'm still learning about web assign. So for right now, if you guys have used web assign in the past, you're ahead of me. I may assign some web assign problems in the future. At this point, I'm still learning about it. So no until further notice. I can't argue with that. I don't know. Um, there are other things on web assignment. Like you can ask me questions, right? You could send me an email too, but it's interactive. Part of web assignment. Where are you getting that? Where are you getting that from? If you don't have any, you have not used it. I'm told. I will find out. Oh. Yeah. Uh, as I said, if, if the assignment on Schoenberg.com is a little less than this, and you bother to look it up, you can do a little less. Is it easy to do a little into it? Would you have to kill it? Uh, you know, shortchange yourself. Go ahead. Go ahead. my email address. Then you just a paper. I get this key here. Well, maybe, maybe not, but you certainly could shortchange your education. You don't want to do that, do you? <laughs> All right, let's let's talk about this. Um, is y a function of x? Anybody have an opinion on that? Yes. Want to raise their hand? Okay. It is a function. It passes the. Yes? Alright. Um, uh, yes. Good answer. Um, does anybody here not remember the vertical line test? Okay. Uh, I'm glad functions are coming up because this class is going to. Functions, functions are going to come out of your ears. The function, okay, this is actually above your pay grade, but that's okay. In mathematics, you have a set, we'll call it S, and a map from S to another set, which we'll call, actually, we're going to call this V, right? R. It's a map from the domain to the range. It could be continuous, it could be like all real numbers, it could be a finite set, or it could be a discrete set. Finite would be like one, two, three, right? It goes to four, five, six. And it's some map, it doesn't have to be the obvious one. It could be one goes to five. Two goes to four, two goes to six. However, you cannot have, what can you not have? You cannot have one goes to four, one, one goes to five, one goes to six. Just one output. And the way we sometimes express that is the vertical line test, right? I have some function. Now let's take one you should. You should even recognize my crappy drawing here. Anyone know what that, what I, what I meant when I drew that function? Parabola, right? Something like <laughs> y equals x squared. So if I draw vertical lines, how many times do they cross? Each vertical line crosses this how many times? Once. Now. If I were to draw it this, this is also a parabola. This is x equals y squared. But this is not a function because 
my mapping here from each x to y. Is that right? Let's take one, take these two points here. This is one, one. This is one, negative one, right? One, x equals one squared, right? negative one squared and one equals one squared, right? It's not a function. It is a mapping, you know? Not being a function isn't the worst thing in the world. It's a mapping. We're going to actually deal with that situation where we have something where a function is a function, but its inverse is not. Yeah, it is true. It is true. Okay. Actually, I look at the numbers. And now, sometimes we can take a function, the inverse of a function, which isn't a function, make it a function. We'll get to that. It's fine. Okay. All right. So, it doesn't pass the. Get back to the problem set here. It passes the vertical line test. So that's how we know it's a function. Is it periodic? I couldn't see who said that. Stand up and take credit. Who said it? Oh, okay. Yes. How do you know? Does it really? Yeah, we're we're still touching you. That's a good answer here. Um, you could like check each of those values. What's the p? Somebody? That's going to be another question. I know. Three. Three. So any of these numbers you plug in here, you plug in 1, you get 2. You plug in 3, I guess I should point here, 1, sorry, 0, you get 2. You add 3 to that, you get 2. You add 3 to that, you get 2. OK. We start at 1, you get 10. You add 3 to that, you get 10. Ready? Now, um, interested in this equation if both x and x plus p are part of the domain, right? I mean, you could say, what about 13? f of 13 should be 10, right? Because f of 10 plus 3 should be equal to f of 10. But unfortunately, 13 isn't in the table. It's not part of the domain. So we don't have to worry about that. OK. Uh, what is the frequency of y? Anybody? You got the period you've got. The period you've got. It's one third. It's one third. Now, unlike our nice uh, uh, previous example where we had a graph and we had units. The units of this are nothing. Just the number, right? One third. It's not. Well, it does? Yeah. Where? 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 Well, then it's one over seconds, right? Cycles per second. Do you want to read it? I'm sad. Sad because there is there is a something's going to come up Thursday where we're going to look at a number, and I think it's it's just this is a beautiful thing in mathematics. We get to measure something. But there's no time, inches, whatever units. We'll get to that. All right. Uh, the next two questions should be easy. easy. What is the amplitude now? Six. Six, OK. How do you know that? 
Okay. There we go. Is everybody happy with that? What frequency again? 0.3 minus 2. The frequency was one third. The period was three. Okay. The range. Range was Okay, and this is where I'm not going to get nitpicky with you guys, but actually the range, the range of this function is, let's see, it's a set, two's in it, fourteen's in it, ten's in it, you get everything? Yeah, that's the actual range. Oh, but, but if you told me it's from two to fourteen, I'm fine with that. Question? Please, please argue with me. I could be wrong. Does that mean that you want to read them separately? No, no. I'm, I'm being pedantic here. I'm being more precise than I expect from you. When, when, when you're, when you're, when you're getting your PhD, that's the answer. Don't worry about it. Now. Did, did I confuse anybody by that? I hope not. I, I will do that by accident. I apologize. Okay. What's the? Okay. Why is it only those? Because the range, remember, I still have my diagram now. A function just takes a domain, a set, to a range. The domain of this function is 0, 1, 2, up to 10. It's discrete. It's just those numbers. It's not the numbers in between. Now, if you're a scientist and you're taking measurements, you say, I'm taking measurements, discrete measurements, but it is a continuous function. But in mathematics, this is just, it's just this set, and it just goes to 2, 10, and 14. Just another set. This is a precise function. This is just a precise thing that in mathematics. That in mathematics. Right, so if you were to do something in real world, You'd have to, right? And you and you'd say clearly, you know, if these are like some, like the ties or some other measurement, you say this is, you know, range two to fourteen. Okay. okay. And the midline, did we do the midline? Somebody add up the midline. more minutes people have questions if you're you know I do want to I want you to hand those in with your names on I'm gonna try and have them yeah that's a um that's a good you know good observation yeah I remember piece wise yeah they piece wise is much more flexible but um uh, there's a whole now we have to get into this stuff. He was asking about Fourier analysis. There's this problem of finding the Fourier decomposition of a square wave. And if you are really interested, you can Google, I think it's called Gibbs. Gibbs something. Not function, but Gibbs effect. Or Gibbs phenomenon. Gibbs phenomenon. Gibbs phenomenon. Thank you, sir. Gibbs phenomenon. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Yes. Okay. So he goes to his eighth grade. He goes to Miller Middle School, and uh, he was quite bored with his class. Mm -hmm. He came and took the test. Is they they say you can take calculus C. I mean, sorry, P calculus. Mm -hmm. right? This is this one, mm -hmm. right? So then, there is some little bit of oh, yeah. here. So you have to go I'm not really a math person, and get a concurrent, uh, I'm just, concurrent I'm registration. Concurrent registration. Yeah, this is for yeah, the school and here, yeah. yeah. because both are running together, right? Okay. So the school is now saying, because you're middle school, they're not going to sign this paper. I'm, 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 I'm listening to you. I have to do one, I have to grab something. See you, Mr. Schoenberg. Thank you. So, so. Wait, wait, that was the, the key crucial point. 